This tutorial explains how to apply the break and next statements within for loops using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example and this example is based on the for loop that we can create with lines two to four of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm first specifying that I want to run a loop over the index i from the value one to the value five. And then within this for loop, I'm specifying that I want to print the sentence, this is step number i. So if you run lines two to four of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that a new output has been returned. And as you can see, this output tells us this is step one, two, three, four, and five. Now let's assume that we want to insert a break condition in this for loop. Then we might apply the code that you can see in lines six to 13. So in these lines of code, I'm again using an index from one to five. However, then I'm also using an if condition and I'm specifying in this if condition that if the index i is equal to four, then I want to insert a break. So if you run lines six to 13 of the code, you can see at the bottom that another output is returned. And this output is telling us this is step one, two and three. However, at the index position four, as you can see in line eight of the code, we have inserted a break. And for that reason, the for loop stopped running at this point. So as you have seen, the break statement can be used to interrupt a for loop. So in the next example, I want to show you how to use the next function to skip one iteration of a for loop. And we can do that as you can see in lines 15 to 22 of the code. So once again, I'm using an index from one to five. And then in lines 17 to 19 of the code, I'm again specifying an if condition. And this if condition should check at which position the index i is equal to four. However, in difference to the previous example, I'm using the next statement instead of the break statement. So if you run lines 15 to 22 of the code, you can see that another output is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And as you can see, this output tells us this is step one, two, three, and five. So in contrast to the previous example, where we have stopped our for loop after the third iteration, we have now only skipped the fourth iteration, but we have returned the message once again for the fifth iteration after our next statement. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.